All right. Here's a um, typical applied problem you might have seen even in like a high school physics course. Um, you have some object, it's falling. Acceleration due to gravity, minus 32 feet per second squared, um, unless you're in Canada or in a physics class where they use metric, then you might be going with minus 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that at time t equals 3, velocity is minus 10 feet per second. And now we want to figure out, based on that information, what's the velocity for any other time, right? So we say, okay, what do we know? So basically we say, uh, what are we given? Given that the acceleration, which is a function of t, is negative 32, right? It's a constant function. Uh, we also know that acceleration, and this I guess you need to know a little bit of physics here, acceleration is defined as the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Okay? So we know v prime. Okay? Well, we can take an antiderivative and we can say that v of t must be minus 32t plus some constant. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, we know that when t is equal to 3, the velocity is equal to negative 10. So we can put that information in. V of 3 is minus 32 times 3 plus c, and we want that to come out to give us negative 10. So we work that out. 3 times 32 gives us 96. Add that, you know, move that to the other side. We add 96 to negative 10. We get 86 for C, right? So this tells us that C equals 86. So my velocity as a function of time is minus 32t plus 86, right? So one of the things that you can get from something like that is this also tells you things like, oh, um, if, if we think this whole process began when t was equal to zero, right, then our object started with an initial velocity of 86 feet per second traveling upwards, right? We think of negative as down in this context, we're moving up and down, right? Um, so it started with this initial velocity, it was going up at 86 feet per second, right? And then it starts coming down, right? And by the time we hit three seconds, velocity is negative 10 due to this acceleration um, due to gravity. Uh, now, there, there are lots of places you can take a problem like this, right? This is all that we were asked for in this question. But there are lots of reasonable follow-up questions that you might ask. You might ask things like, okay, that's the velocity as a function of time. What about position, right? Velocity is the derivative of position. Can we do another antiderivative and get the position as a function of time? Well, yeah, of course we can, right? Um, we could go one step further. We could say, all right, um, y of t, let's call it y, think of y as our height, right, is going to be, so antiderivative here, t squared over 2, 32 over 2 gives me minus 16t squared plus 86 t. Again, plus some, well, maybe I shouldn't call it c. I already had a c, so maybe we call this, uh, I don't know, c2 or something. It's a new constant, right? When we get to there. Um, so now if I, if I knew the position at some particular point in time, I would be able to get you information on the position for all time, right? But again, there's this undetermined constant that I would need to know, right? So if somebody told me that, you know, um, when t was equal to zero, the object started at a height of, of 50 feet, well, then I know that c2 has to be 50, and now I have y as a function of t for any t, right? Um, other questions you might ask are things like, all right, what this tells us is that the the object started traveling upwards at 86 feet per second, and then acceleration due to gravity is slowing that down until it peaks, and then it starts heading down again, right? At what time did it peak, right? What's happening there? Well, 
um, what happens when it hits that peak height, right? That's kind of the maximum value for the position. Um, well, we know that a maximum happens when a derivative is zero, right? Velocity is the derivative of position. So if we know when the velocity is zero, then we know the time at which that thing hit its peak height. So we can figure that out, right? Um, if we knew the value of this constant C2, we can take that value, right, 86 over 32, we could plug it into here and we could figure out just how high it made it, right? Um, we could figure out things like that. We could figure out problems like, you know, how long did it take until the object hit the ground? If we define the ground as being maybe when y equals zero, right? Then we, we have a quadratic that we have to solve. Um, lots of interesting problems that you could ask in this context, right? All these kind of, you know, um, a stone is dropped from a building variations on this problem. Um, they're all solved with antiderivatives given initial values.